Greetings YouTube and welcome back to my sketchpad, my sketchbook. So now we're getting into uh, some things that they're, they're are somewhat realistic in regards. Like for example, this is a frog crotch arrow design, which is taken from the real world. This one's a little on the light side. I think it needed to be a, would need to have been a little more robust to function. These blades should have probably been a little thicker and this curve should have been more gentle. That's just me. But it's a design that exists in the real world. You can find these. Um, here we have a coach gun. So it's got seven barrels and it's attached with a battle axe. So you have a dwarven gun slash hand weapon and gun hand weapon combinations did exist in the early period of firearms. And um, so this is a uh, a matchlock. So this is actually bringing a match into a pan. So this is a matchlock weapon that could function as also a uh, as an axe. And here we have a battle staff, and this is a before I started using that term, but that's what it is. And so my wrapping is getting a little bit better in this one. Um, again, November, I'm doing, I, at that time I was sketching every single day, and I was doing sketches after, so I was just eating this thing up. This would have been like one day, one sitting at, at and watching my television. But you notice how it's becoming a little more formal. The, their designs are getting a little larger. I'm starting to have more comfort and command of the page. Here we have a large over the top uh, battle axe with an aquatic theme that was intentional. I can't remember what I needed it for, but that's what I wanted to do. Here we have a one-handed wooden mace, so it's a, essentially a log with bands on it. The bands are absurdly large, but it kind of gives you the vibe of a, something that an ogre would use. Here we have a javelin, um, a design specifically, uh, or, or even a, just a throwing spear. It actually had fletchings to help stabilize it in flight. Um, here we have a design that's actually taken from a clipboard. So if you look at a standard clipboard and you look at it, so the clipboard is faced in this direction. And here's the, this is the point you'd push to make the clip move. This is a shape I saw in the, uh, in the metal that inspired me to come make a military fork that has a kind of a Chinese feel with rings in there that make noise intentionally. Um, here we have a throwing weapon, and it's one of my first throwing steels of, I think, my own design. So it's a throwing star, but it's just got blades, and you hold it like this. The whole thing would have been about this big, and then you throw it with the, with the kind of a motion like that. Here we have an asymmetric um, she a spear of some variety, uh, obviously ob absurdly over the top, but I'm still working in the fantasy vein. Here we have a very functional gladius. Here we have another fel a felshawn, two different versions of that idea this kind of a more of a Hassan Chop Middle Eastern design. And this is more of a, Euro, a, a utilitarian, straightforward, no-nonsense European design. Here we have um, a, inspired by a real-world engineer sword, which had a saw on, on the back, and uh, it was a short sword design and used by cannoneers. Um, here we have a cleaver, an oversized two-handed cleaver, and I may have been inspired by uh, Star Wars, I mean, uh, Lord of the Rings with that one. Here we have, this is actually taken from the real world, I believe, inspired by a knife I saw someone using, which I thought was kind of neat, so I did my own version. A lot of these, this is, uh, are inspired by things I've seen. This is based on one I own. <laughs> I own this knife in real life, or one very similar to it, and I did my own version. Here we have a thin dagger. Here we have a smatch it, which is a real world device. So it's kind of a, a heavy knife slash hatchet. Um, here we have something that's supposed to be a crystalline blade, and I'm just trying to figure out how to do the crystalline look. So it wasn't the best, but it was a start. Um, here we have, um, shoot. So this is a top look, side view. Oh yeah, this was designed to be used, to be thrown along ice. This was a weapon designed to skit along ice, a bladed uh, hurling stone. So there you go, heavy duty, probably stone with a steel edge designed to be thrown along the ice. Yeah, it's kind of absurd. Here we have a Rambo style Bowie, kind of fusing the 19th century Bowie with kind of a modern take on it. And this would have been a strip of uh, brass along the back. The theory was, at least in theory, that when knife fighting, that would catch your opponent's blade and allow you to, to, to come in on his guard after you disrupt his motion. I have no idea if it worked. I don't know if it's more than just legends. Here we have more of a traditionally 19th century Bowie. Here we have a bladed 
sickle or scythe rather. This is silly, over the top anime style weapon. And here we have uh, a battle axe with a very similar theme. And again, I'm trying to go for some real avant-garde designs. Here we have a, I did these all in the same setting. So here we have some daggers, a curved Persian, double-edged double, head, double kind of European, another curved Persians, two more curved Persians. I'm just kind of making me think of a Moran, um, Moran style made by uh, Bill Moran, a 20th century knife maker. Um, and here we start going again. I'm just, I'm thinking I was, this is when I was, my wife was living in Maine and I was just, I, when I was hanging out there, I was just banging out these things because I had no other, I had no access to the internet or television. So I would just sit there listening to music and banging out drawings. So here we had an ax. Here we have a strange pole arm. Here we have a staff top, which holds a gem. Another staff top, which holds a gem. This is another staff top that holds six gems. Um, all for illustrations of magic items in role-playing games. Um, here we have a goblet, tankard, flask, and uh, a spell book, and quill and pen, uh, uh, inkwell and quill, all for illustrations in, in uh, role-playing games. Here we have a kind of a bat-themed hand axe. This is an uh, uh, this is a makana style bladed obsidian sword with kind of probably horrible faces in there, but. I was trying to get that vibe. Here we have something I believe was inspired by an action figure I saw. It was uh, it was a uh, anthropomorphic tiger or lion or smiling dog or something like that. I never had a chance to buy one. I was always disappointed. Here we have an elven style sword. And again, I, I really fell in love with the, the, those double curves. And that became very much my, my elven theme. Um, here we have a large two-handed battle axe. Again, fantasy. Here we have a Klingon-inspired Batlev. So there's my version thereof. Here we have an Orc-inspired bow, which has blades in it so that it could be used as a weapon when you didn't, when someone got too close, so you wouldn't have to worry about being um, not having to draw another weapon. Here we have a kind of a glaive head. No, the shaft is not depicted. This was made in December of 2002 uh, with a tassel in the back and kind of a I don't know if those are sharp or not, but it was kind of a stylistic thing. Here we have a stone weapon. So this was a ground slate blade, not chipped, but ground, bound in place with a tassel just for fun. And it had a snake theme on the shaft kind of carved in there. Um, and here we have a an antler spear. And this was real world items. Both of these were real world items, though I don't, I'm not saying that my versions are perfectly acceptable, but these were real world things. They were slate spears and there were spears made out of battle antlers. Here we have a science fiction sword, which is absurd and bizarre because it's got these strange teeth that would be useless, but it's kind of a science fiction post-apocalyptic vibe going there. And I really liked those things. Uh, I still do. Uh, now here we get into some weird things. These were all inspired by Klingons. So these are kind of Klingon hand weapons that I imagine they might want to use. Uh, different, all different kind of short sword size. They'd be, you know, machete sized things, but over the top and kind of silly. Here we have a device that is a, uh, with, the theory is you thrust it into something and then it would open up and act, anchoring it in place, sort of like a harpoon design with primitive fantasy version of a harpoon. Um, of a chopping, uh, heavy chopping knife of a Persian design and this is kind of a Japanese Falcata, Fal Falchon kind of a vibe here. That's what I was going for. And this is an, a design on an African axe, which I've actually seen in, in reference books. So it's a pegged, pegged blade on a, on a kind of a baseball bat handle. That's a real world thing. Um, then we have, this is kind of based on a real pole arm I've seen an illustration of. Here we have a one-handed sword inspired by Lord of the Rings, a heavy uh, pole arm designed for slashing um, and chopping, one-handed kind of an elven over-the-top um, scimitar or, or, or falchon. Um, here we have a leaf-themed spearhead, a zigzag spearhead, and this is designed as a four-point tiger spear. Um, which is derived from Chinese, and I even put a little paw in there to show you that it was in fact inspired by the tiger spear.